Rumors abound that the Sega Saturn will clash with the Internet in mid-1996 as Sega of Japan has signed an agreement with Fujitsu Electronics to develop an online Saturn system, which will hook up through the Nifty Serve online system, the Japanese counterpart to CompuServe. Sega of America is mum about any Internet plans, but they do promise multiplayer capability for the Saturn in 1996. With Sony's Combat Link cable and Nintendo's rumored dealings with Netscape to bring the Ultra 64 online, it would seem plausible that Sega will bring the Saturn online in 1996. Stick to IE for all the latest details. You may remember a few months back when we announced the agreement between Sega and Nvidia to port Sega Saturn games to the PC. The result of this agreement is Virtua Fighter Remix on the PC. In order for a Pentium to match the performance of a Saturn, you need to purchase the Diamond Multimedia Edge 3D card, which significantly upgrades the graphics horsepower of the PC. Virtua Fighter Remix is bundled with the card, and Sega is already working on Panzer Dragoon for the Edge 3D, scheduled for release in 1996. The PC version of Remix is nearly identical to the Saturn, but one has to wonder if it wouldn't just be cheaper to purchase a Saturn. The Edge 3D card retails for $299, the same price as the dedicated game machine. Those bad boys have hit the streets, and the law is in your hands, with Sega's Virtua Cop, one of the best games to hit the Saturn. A near-flawless conversion from the arcade, Virtua Cop requires split-second decision-making and timing as you gun down the city's most sinister henchmen. The game comes bundled with the Sega Stunner Gun, which significantly enhances the quality of the game and tremendously helps the atmosphere of the game environment. Virtua Cop is the first Saturn game to support a new high-resolution graphics mode, and the result is an extremely crisp picture, almost identical in quality to the arcade. The actual game is very simple to learn, harking on the old phrase, point and shoot your way to victory. There are three different levels of play, and besides having enemies jump out from behind objects, some of the props actually move. For example, on the construction level, you'll be attacked with a backhoe, and the only way to stop it is to shoot the glass and kill the operator. In addition, innocent bystanders will often run across the screen, and if you shoot them, it's game over time. Overall, Virtua Cop is a bulletproof vest against the competition, easily attaining classic status. Simply put, it's a must-buy. If you play a mean game of pinball, the perfect match for your silver ball-itis is Time Warner Interactive's Last Gladiator's Digital Pinball. As one of the first 32-bit pinball games, it's extremely impressive, featuring four unique tables ranging from the ancient Knight of the Roses to the futuristic Warlock. The tables do not scroll vertically, so it's sometimes hard to track the ball, but it's also less confusing than scrolling pinball games. The addition of Dotmation pixel boards adds extra realism to the game, which is accompanied by a full rock soundtrack. Overall, Last Gladiators is a fine pinball achievement, but it remains to be seen how it will compare to EA's Extreme Pinball, due out in the first quarter of 1996. Surprisingly, the Saturn has been relatively devoid of first-person adventure games, but Gen War from Sega of America fixes that niche, meshing metal with space in an intriguing game. As a special space pilot who operates a revolutionary combat hypersuit, you'll need that expertise when the Gen aliens try to test a planet-destroying weapon and you're the only thing in their path to the trigger. After a very impressive full-motion video introduction sequence, which sets an appropriate mood, it's time to embark on your voyage through 20 levels. The action unfolds in first-person perspective, with full 360-degree battlegrounds and various enemies and power-ups. The levels are varied in scope, with the first group being outdoors on Mars-like terrain, finally leading into the Gen base at the end. The actual gameplay feel is similar to that of Doom, and the game is surprisingly addictive. One unique feature is the ability to skip a level if you find it too hard, but it costs one life to do so. The entire game includes a CD audio soundtrack featuring the band Bygone Dogs, who also scored the music to Cyber Speedway. Gen War does have a learning curve and is somewhat frustrating at the start, but overall it's a unique game experience that has lasting play value. If you enjoyed a Mercenary on the 3DO, this is a very similar game. In the expanding pile of games which feature a future where global terrorists rule and humanity lives on the brink of destruction, Siberia from Interplay Productions is now available on the Saturn. PC aficionados may remember this game from Christmas 94 as it turned many heads with its mix of adventure and action. Suffice it to say, the Saturn version is a near pixel perfect conversion of the PC. If you haven't played the PC version, it's worth a look as some of the action sequences, especially the flight parts near the end, are well worth the price of admission. If you want to do the bash, the monster bash, 
Set your sights on Corpse Killer Graveyard Edition, an interactive movie from Digital Pictures. Significantly upgraded from the 3DO edition from last year, the engine has been enhanced and the full motion video is better quality. The player is a Navy SEAL who has parachuted onto a Caribbean island to locate and neutralize the depraved Dr. Hellman. Interspersed between the video scenes are shooting segments with zombies that run out into the open from hidden huts and crevices. Spanning two CDs, Corpse Killer is a decent shooter from Saturn, although not overly exciting for those of you who thrive on napalm. Mansion of the Hidden Souls is Sega's first RPG entry for the Saturn, sporting intense 3D graphics and incredible animation. The look and feel of the game rivals that of the seventh guest, but thankfully the transition scenes between rooms are quick and to the point. As you embark on a voyage through the creepy mansion, faceless voices and tarot cards are the key to unlocking the mansion's mysteries. The game suffers from a lack of direction at the start, and hence it's somewhat confusing. Overall, as an adventure, Mansion of the Hidden Souls is rather shallow despite good 3D graphics.